Let's review Microsoft Access using Access from Office 2010. Let's start a simple database and I will add one table to it in this video. We'll expand on this database later to make it a relational database. In other words, more than just a single table. It will have several tables that are related together via the primary foreign key relationship. Let's create a database that tracks students taking classes over several semesters. Access isn't showing up, so it's under All Programs. One of the features of Microsoft Access is all the templates that it has available for you to help you create a database that could be applicable. I don't want you to use any of these templates. They're really for advanced users because you modify them. In order to modify these templates, you need to know something about Access. So let's create a blank database. And I'll change the default name to Practice Database. It'll be created right now in the User Documents folder. Make sure you know where you saved it. When you send it to me, you will send me this file, the practice.accdb file, or whatever name you provide your database. Know where you're saving it. I don't know where you saved it. I suggest saving it under My Documents or perhaps a folder on your P drive. So we have a simple table that we want to create. In this case, we're going to create a database that tracks students taking classes over several semesters. One of the tables that I'll need in this practice database is a table that contains records relating to different students. Another table will be a collection of records describing the classes that are being offered in the catalog. And a third table will relate them, and it will be the and it will be a table of which student took which class on what date or what semester and what grade did they get. Very simple little database. So let's first look at how to create a table. There are various ways to do this. I like you to use these different forms, in this case the design view. There are other ways. I could click here, add a text field, and call it last name. That's the student's last name. So you can add fields this way through these links here. I want you to use the design view. That's a reasonable way to do it. So to go into design view I need to save the table. It's a table of students. It contains records of students. Let's call it students. Every table should have a primary key that uniquely identifies each record. The auto number data type is a convenient way of having access take care of the unique numbering system. And well, and I'd like you to use that from time to time as appropriate. In this case, for this example, let's say the student ID, the unique student ID is the student G number. And the student G number with the G is a text data type. So you should always have a description 
some of them are very obvious. We'd want a first name. It's a text field. And let's say date of birth. And that's a date. So I clicked on D. It goes to date. That's a date. And let's add gender. And in gender, let's make it a lookup data type. And by that I mean I only want to allow certain values for gender. And those values are either male or female. So I'm going to type them in. Male or female. No other. I think that's one of the choices, but I'll tell you what, I'll type in other. I think they're allowing that nowadays. And I want to limit to this list, and I do not want to allow multiple values. Now let's look at this table I've created. If I want to look at it, I have to go into the data sheet view. So I've got a data sheet view. I'm in design view right now. So to look at how it, how other people will see it, I'll look at the data sheet view. And I have to save the table. Access will constantly ask you about this. So that's what the table looks like. These are records. So I could type in G and some mysterious thing and Lewis, date of birth, they have this little uh, date picker, which I don't like and I think I'll change. Gender is limited to these choices. If I try to put in something else and hit tab, it's not going to like that. So that's how you create a table. Let's modify this table slightly. Let's say that a last name is required. So under last name, down here required, I'll change that to yes. And for date of birth, I don't like that date picker because you'd have to go back uh, more than 20 years for me. There'd be a lot of clicks on the mouse. So let's put in an input mask We'll save. That's all right. And in this case, I just want a short date. And you can try different things. I mean, you can try it out. So I'll try it out. You have to move the cursor over here. So 03, 1966. That's what it would look like. So I made two changes. So if I try to add a new field here, I'll put in some garbage. It says, oh, you must enter a student name. Oh, okay. So I try to add that record. Now I have to enter a student name. So that's the basics of creating a table. One of the assignments I'll have you create a form and just to show you how easy that is. And I'll make another video to go into more detail. If you click on Create Form, it just creates a form from the existing table. It shows it in Layout View. So you change the size of it to, to make it look uh, appropriate. Now you're in design view. So that's a form. It's very easy to create forms. But I'll make another video that shows other capabilities. So that's a review of how to create a table. You can also input data from Excel very easily.
uh, into access to create a new table.